Well, hello, fellow humans. Big Heavy here, and it's a lot of fun to put together the videos with office tours and you know gadgets and screens and keyboards and all that. And at the end of the day, we're usually interested in all those things because we're trying to make ourselves more comfortable, more productive. But I think what's even more impactful and what I've you know realized in my advancing years is what goes on up here has as much or more of an impact than you know having the very best technology set up, you know, best laptop, fastest network, all that stuff. And if you're rolling your eyes a little bit and thinking, you know, this is more of that hippy dippy nonsense, maybe you're skeptical, I wanted to share a pretty easy trick and something that, you know, takes almost no effort, has zero cost, you know, doesn't require you to do a whole bunch of lifestyle or, you know, mental shifts, but can have a really huge impact. And it's something I've been doing for a number of years that, you know, quite frankly, has had an outsized impact for the almost minuscule level of effort that it takes to apply to my day-to-day -day life. And that's this idea of these three, you know, little simple magic words. And it's not I love you, although, you know, arguably that can change your life, but it takes a little bit more work than the three words I'm about to give you. And those three words are I get to. And what this is based on is the fact that most of us have experienced. And that's you can take two very similar people, put them in the exact same situation, and interestingly, you'll see, you know, even if they're, you know, similar economic circumstances, similar backgrounds, similar, you know, everything else, in some cases, one might thrive in that scenario. You know, the other person might say, this is terrible, you know, woe is me, this is, you know, some cosmic force kind of raining, you know, thunder and hail and lightning bolts on my head and just trying to make my life miserable. And what it comes down to is the exact same circumstances can be perceived and acted upon very differently. And this is not new information, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but let me give you an example of how to use those three simple words I get to that happened to me recently in my life. So I've got an upcoming business trip out to Singapore and it's, you know, a day and a half essentially to get there and back. I'm gonna be away from my family for a couple weeks. I'm gonna be, have to, you know, reschedule a bunch of stuff and kind of move things around. And when I first started planning this trip, I you know, got a little bit out of my I get to kind of lane and I delved into my default mode, which is you know, probably the default mode for many of us, which is I have to. And I perceive this trip as, oh, I have to go to Singapore and I'm gonna have to move my schedule around. I'm gonna have to miss some kids events. I'm gonna have to you know, suffer through jet lag on the inbound and outbound and probably lose a couple days where I'm not quite you know, working up to my full capacity. And this litany went on and on of all the terrible things and you know, this woe is me about I have to go to this business trip to Singapore. Now I've gotten a little better at catching myself when I start to slip into I have to. And you know, I, I was able to make that mental turn and instead start to say to myself, I get to go to Singapore. And when you start with that positive and you start you know, from a position of, hey, this is an opportunity to me, that changes the dynamic a lot. And instead of thinking about jet lag and all the things I was gonna miss, when I went on the path of I get to go to Singapore, it was, oh, I'm going to this, you know, country or city state or whatever it technically is. Uh, it's a place I've never been before. It's a place that I've heard a lot about. I'm going to get to see this, you know, very interesting and dynamic economy, this place that's been in the news, this place that, you know, is unlike anything I've ever been to. I haven't been to Asia in a good 15-ish years, so I get to see how that region has changed. You know, I get to experience a new melting pot of sorts of Asian cultures. I get to go to this conference and learn a bunch of stuff and meet a bunch of peop new people. And the list of kind of interesting and cool opportunities that I would have went on and on around this business trip. And this is exactly the same for, you know, the more mundane aspects of my life. For example, recording this video, I could start off with, oh, I have to record a video. You know, it's been two weeks since I put anything on YouTube. The algorithm seems biased towards, you know, people that publish more stuff and I have to go out to my studio, I have to write a script, I have to turn on the camera, you know, I have to reschedule calls. And I could make it this, you know, kind of terrible and painful thing that I have to do. And unsurprisingly, when I've made out this thing to be, you know, rather terrible in my mind, it becomes something that I dread, something that I tend to put off and something that I'm not that interested in doing. Compare that to, I get to go and make a YouTube video. You know, I get to go and you know, sit in this cool space that I've built for myself where I you know, have my camera set up. I get to you know, communicate and share ideas with people you know, from around the world that I have this unique opportunity to get to speak to. I get to you know, hopefully share some little tidbit that you know, if it helps one person out there watching, then I consider that a pretty major victory. 
and I get to work on things that interest me. You know, I am legitimately interested in recording video and editing and putting this stuff together and having a creative outlet and a little bit of a different forum than what I have in my, you know, my sort of nine to five kind of day job. And it's the exact same activity at the end of the day. You know, I'm doing the exact same things. I'm, you know, sitting on my butt in front of the couch, staring at a camera with this, you know, gigantic light next to it. But my entire outlook has changed. And hopefully that comes through in the content I produce. You know, when I go and I get to do a video, I'm excited about it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of have a little skip in my step coming up the stairs. I, you know, put a little more effort, I hope, into writing the script. You know, hopefully the dynamic of me being excited about this comes across in this video ultimately versus, you know, this obligation and active drudgery and kind of this obligation that's, you know, been hung around my neck by you know, these evil external forces or whatever, where I think that energy comes through in the video as well. And you probably notice that in your colleagues, people around you, or, you know, maybe even yourself sometimes, you know, you go into an office or you talk to some of the same people on Teams or whatever, there's always the kind of, you know, Eeyore, Debbie Downer, Negatron, whatever you want to call them. You're that person where everything that happens is, you know, the universe aligning against them. Everything that they have come across their plate is some obligation and a, I have to and has a whole litany of reasons why it's a terrible thing. Versus, you know, there's some people that seem to have, you know, be walking on clouds at work. They seem to be having a good time. And I've tried to move myself more in that direction, particularly around, you know, things that we do for work. It's something we spend, you know, I don't know about you, but I spend a good six to 10, 12 hours sometimes of my day. So the majority of my day executing work-related stuff. And I don't want it to be drudgery. I don't want it to be this obligation, and this terrible thing, and this, you know, I have to, you know, do all these things I don't want to do. Otherwise, you know, my kids don't eat. Instead, I want to wake up and say, you know, I get to do all these interesting things. I get to meet with a bunch of people all around the world and talk to them. And they're, you know, all interesting human beings that I get to interact with. You know, I get to put together a PowerPoint, which maybe is not, you know, my favorite physical activity, but it's a way that I get to share ideas and share content and, you know, gain other people's insights and input. So that mental shift, you know, can legitimately change your entire outlook on something as major as the job you do every day. You know, it can change your outlook on your family. You know, some people you'll hear like, oh, I have to go see another kid's soccer game and it's long and it's hot and blah, blah, blah. And there's others that, you know, are legitimately like, hey, I get to go see my kid, you know, express their athletic potential or you know, do something they enjoy or just, you know, have time with my family around me and you know, be engaged and present and all that stuff. The other neat thing that I think the words I get to do is they make you kind of the captain of your own ship. You know, when you have to, it implies that there's some external entity hanging an obligation around your neck. And that's a pretty tough existence if your whole day is dictated by some external force, you don't have a lot of say, you don't have a lot of you know, ability to, to chart your own path. And you know, whether that's the reality or not, by changing that and flipping that to I get to, now you have some agency. You know, you're doing things because there are opportunities, because there are you know, places where you get to bring your best self or you get to have these interactions or you, you know, have some measure of engagement and interest versus you know, just going through these drudgeries that somebody else has, has hung around your neck. The final thing that I'll leave you with that I really like about I get to is it also acts as a bit of a sanity check. You know, there are some activities where it's a bit of a stretch to have that positive outlook on the activity. You know, I think of something that I did a couple months ago relatively recently, and that was doing my annual taxes, which in the US happens every April. And if I'm really reaching, you know, I could do some sort of, I get to do my taxes and I get to kind of take a yearly deep dive into my financial situation, you know, see where things stand, kind of see, compare year over year and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a, an act of drudgery and it's something that, you know, is legitimately opposed on me by an outside force. And where I get to comes in handy is if you're struggling to kind of turn that thing into an opportunity and it truly is an obligation, ask yourself what the cost is of not doing that activity. So in the case of taxes, you know, I have to do my taxes at the end of the day. There's not a lot of interest or opportunity there. And I can make a pretty simple evaluation. You know, if I don't do my taxes at some point, you know, agents of the state come and try and inflict some form of violence on me. You know, I either get locked up in a cage or get, you know, dragged to a, a court or, you know, they kick down my door or whatever they do when you, you know, spend enough time not paying your taxes. And that's enough of a negative consequence that I'm willing to take on that I have to. 
you look at some other activities we have in our lives, like, you know, maybe you feel like, oh, I have to, you know, have dinner with this person that I'm not really that interested in spending time with, you know, I'm struggling to come up with some I get to's and some opportunities around that. Ask yourself, do you really need to have dinner with that person? And maybe the answer is no. And now you freed yourself from something that truly is an obligation. You've given yourself back some more time. Or if there is something that's, you know, maybe you don't feel like you can get out of, maybe there's a, I have to, you know, do my TPS report every week. Well, think through, is there a way I can optimize this? Is there some motivation behind me having to do my TPS report that ultimately is in somebody else's best interest? And can I find where our interests align? You know, maybe your boss makes you do that TPS report because he or she wants to know how you spent your week. Is there a better way you can communicate how you spent your week? You know, is there some way you can get them what they want in a way that's more palatable to you, that maybe turns that TPS report from an I have to to something else that you know, maybe can be an opportunity for you. So I'll leave you with that quick overview of how to use I get to, and I'd strongly encourage you, you know, give this a try. It basically costs nothing. It takes, you know, little more than kind of the mental effort to catch yourself saying, oh, I have to, and you can kind of, you know, usually feel that eye roll and that sort of, you know, slouching the shoulders and all that stuff. And instead, you know, hitting the, the mental brakes and saying, oh, I get to. And that's a pretty low bar. And see if it works for you. You know, for me, I'll literally, you know, go from that sort of slouching and, you know, feeling like a uh, weight's kind of been added to my, my metaphorical backpack to, you know, now a weight's been lifted. You know, I've now found some opportunity and I have some new interesting thing I get to explore versus another rock that's, that's kind of in that, uh, that virtual backpack. At least for me, I found if I start to do this consistently, I just have a generally more positive outlook on things. You know, I find when I'm really doing a good job of kind of everything that comes my way, shifting from I have to to I get to, you know, I wake up early in the morning, I hop out of bed, I'm feeling excited. You know, I'll go and you know, sit down in my office and just start cranking through stuff. And at the end of the day, you know, around 6 p.m. or whatever, I'll feel like, you know, hey, the, it's already the end of the day. You know, I've gotten a lot done feel like I've learned a lot, feel like I've, I've grown as a person, and I'll feel you know, satisfied, but not exhausted. On those days where I start to slip back into the I have to, it's a lot of, you know, how do I play games with myself to force myself to do things? You know, how do I stop this you know, useless doom scrolling and get to the things that I have to do? And I'll make it to that, you know, maybe 5.30 in this case and just feel exhausted and feel burned out versus you know, feeling like, hey, I, you know, I accomplished a lot today. I put in a solid effort, you know, I don't wanna do any more. I'm, I'm kind of happy to close the, the book on this day and feel like it's been an accomplished day versus a, you know, let's end this day, get as far away from it as we can because it was just a, you know, a slog through a swamp. So at this point, I get to wish all of you well. Hope you have a chance to experiment with these techniques. Again, cost you nothing, you know, very little mental burden expended on this whole idea of I get to. Give it a try, let me know if it works, and as always, be well, Big Heavy, wishing you peace.